Hello. Thank you for joining me on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Shana Park, your host for Money Talks. My guest today is Rayanne Ishabez. Welcome to the show, Rayanne. Hi, Shana. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for being on. Um, I'm sure if you guys have seen the series before, my mom, Shana Park, used to interview Rayanne a lot, but I'm very, very honored to be um, interviewing you today. So could you please share a little more about yourself? Absolutely. Yes. So thank you, Shana, again, for having me here. So my name is Rayanne Chavez. I'm with World System Builders. I've been with the organization for about 13 years now, so quite some time. I am married with two kids. And, um, you know, basically our organization, we really, truly believe in financial education. And um, for the last 13 years, I've been working with a lot of individuals, families, small businesses. And um, I bring value to them by providing w- uh, them with different financial solutions, whether that's, you know, helping them to um, provide proper protection um, or saving for the future or simply just replacing their paycheck with a lifetime um, income source. So, but primarily, you know, we really do believe in education. And so that's why I love shows like Big Tech, because this is a great platform to be able to do that. Yes, and thank you for coming on to share your knowledge. And you do have so much experience, so I can't wait to get into it. But, you know, what got you into finances? Yeah, so um, for me personally, I've always been curious about money, Um, especially as a kid. I was just, I just had like this natural curiosity about about money. But, um, you know, I didn't, unfortunately, though, my family would never really talk about money. One of the things my parents did do being immigrants from the Philippines is they really talked about um, academic education, right? So like most families, my parents told me, make sure to get a good education, um, get a degree so that I can get a good job and um, then live happily ever after, I guess. Um, But uh, so I, um, you know, I thought I was doing the right things. I graduated um, in the a dental industry, actually. So my first career was a dental hygienist. Um, and, um, you know, because my parents said go to school so that you can get a good job. And, you know, um, hygienists make pretty good salary. And so, um, you know, I graduated from college, started working, bought a house, or son was going to private school. Um, I thought I was doing all the right things that I was supposed to be doing. Uh, but on the financial side, I really started to feel like, oh my goodness, why do I feel... Um, like financially, we're not in the position we're supposed to be. You know, like most families, both my husband and I worked. Uh, we both had good jobs. Um, and again, we thought we were doing all the right things. But from a financial position, I really felt like um, the more we did things, I just felt like uh, we were suffocating financially. And so uh, we knew that we had to find a different way or a, a solution to our finances. And so that's how I decided to get educated. And that's what... Um, you know, that's how I started with this company because I really was attracted to the fact that they spent so much time really educating people about uh, money. So that's how I got into it. And, you know, I realized that there were so many people just like me. It didn't matter, you know, how much money you made, if you have a degree or not, um, how much, you know, um, most of us grow up not really knowing or having a formal education about money. And so I saw that there was an opportunity to be able to help a lot of people um, through the financial industry. Yes, and like you said, you only know what you know. And I feel like for myself, I was not taught about finances in school. And it was talked about in my household. However, you know, for everyone who heard my story, I ended up going to traditional route, went to college and ended up in a lot of debt. But I'm very, very grateful for you know, we work very closely with each other and for all the knowledge that you share with me because I don't want to be in a position where I'm not financially set up for the future. So with that being said, you know, um, I know you know, but for those of you who don't know, I just got married. And did you know also that Valentine's Day is one of the most popular days uh, to get married? Did you know that? Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. Uh, I guess that makes sense, right? It's like the official love day. So people would 
um, I, it makes sense that people would get married, but I didn't realize that, yeah, that it was so popular to get married on that day. Yeah, it's a popular day. However, Valentine's Day is a very expensive day as well. I, I can't even imagine the cost of a venue or even for flowers in general. I feel like the price doubles on Valentine's Day. But could you share some statistics of, you know, money and marriage? Absolutely. Yeah. So again, congratulations on your marriage. Um, it's an it's an exciting time, right? To to be uh, getting married and you know starting this journey, uh, this new journey in life. Um, yet it also presents itself with you know a lot of excitement, but also challenges. And I think one of the biggest one is um, money, right? And so um, let me just share with you some statistics here. So um, when it comes to money and marriage, right? Um, so First of all, let's look at um, the leading cause of divorce. So this finances is actually the second leading cause of divorce. So I, I was actually quite surprised it wasn't the first, to be honest. <laughs> what is the first one? It's actually infidelity. Oh, so wow. infidelity is the first one. And um, so the second leading cause of divorce is um, about money, finances. And so I think it was like 20 to 40% of, of divorces is due to finances. So um, why? Why is that, right? So there's some studies here. It says 86% of couples um, today start their marriage with um, more debt than maybe in the past. So if you look at, you know, what's going on with um, today, more and more people just in general carry debt, right? Whether it's student loan debt. Um, when I graduated from college, I had um, student loan debt that I was paying um, $400 a month. And that's pretty significant, you know, and then especially, again, like in my case where we got, we got married and we had, you know, um, our mortgage plus um, car payments, student loans, just you can imagine that stress on a couple, right? When they go into marriage already having debt, that's now you're adding, um, your each other's debt to this marriage. So 86%, that's a good majority of people already starting their marriage with debt. Um, that's one. And uh, again, of course, the more debt that you have, the more stress that it causes, right? So we all know how that turns out. So, and then when there's more stress and strain on a marriage, and then um, there, and then it causes to let, uh, the, the stress can lead to not communicating about money. And then that, and then not communicating about money, then, you know, there are times when couples experience, um, there's a term for it, it's, it's um, money infidelity, right? So it's pretty much exactly what it means, like you're pretty much cheating about stuff or not um, pr purposely not telling your spouse about, you know, maybe your debt or your spending, you're hiding it from your spouse. And so then when those things surface now you get a breakdown of um trust right so then now you can see how these things can lead to a divorce yeah but you know going back to what you shared when you introduced yourself is that a lot of times we're not even taught about money and it's not a easy conversation that we have in a household so with that and money not being a comfortable topic when you end up going into marriage, maybe for both sides, it's not easy to even begin to talk about or people don't even know where to start. I feel very fortunate for, you know, World System Builder and for all the great knowledge from you and my mom that, you know, fortunately, I'm not in that situation. But I know let's go back to um, getting married. It is very expensive these days, right? And going back, I was starting off your marriage with a lot of debt. I know when, you know, we were looking for a venue, it was minimum $10,000. And that's, that's a lot for a person maybe who may not be educated in finances, who doesn't have an emergency fund. And especially a lot of times too, when you get married, you have maybe a year or so, but that's a, that's a huge expense that you're paying for. So with that being said, you know, um, do you have any advice on that, on how to you know, manage your money when you're navigating such a big event in your life? Yeah, I mean, you know, 
in general, are you talking about like um, planning your wedding? Because, well, I think the statistics today, like or 2023, the average cost of a wedding was about $30,000. So, you know, again, we talked about earlier how you're already um, going into the marriage with your own debt, whether that's student loan, credit card debt, car loans. And then on top of that, you're both creating now new debt together with this marriage and plus all the other things, right? Like buying a house and things like that, upgrading your lifestyle. But um, I think, you know, that's how about we cover some of the things that, um, you know, that article that I sent you, Sina, about just the different, um, the I think the, tar- the, the different or the top six money issues that uh, couples um have challenges with yeah so I think the so the first one is failing to pull earnings so today I noticed that a lot of couples they want to they tend to separate their finances because most people today they're both working right both spouses work so um, they make their own money and so they want to handle their own finances and so they kind of split the bill in half and then they spend their own money uh, well, there's so many studies that have shown um, that when you pull your resources together, like you actually have joint accounts, you know, that actually creates for a much better marriage um, and less argument about money when you pull your resources together rather than, okay, here's your money. That's your money. That's my money. This is my money. And, you know, we'll just split everything. I can go relate to that as well because... I know for myself and my husband, we, you know, had, we did have money issues in terms of having separate accounts. And really, once we got joint accounts, a lot of those issues were solved. And it doesn't matter where it came from, but now it's just combined and it built up a better relationship and for us to have better communication about money. And actually, you gave me that advice, so thanks. For- <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I still remember that convers- having that conversation with you. And I think it's so huge. You know, even for me, I still remember um, when, like, my husband and I, of uh, wow, 20 years now, we, um, before we even got married, we actually already started to um, put our resources together. And because at the time I was, you know, he was working, but I was still a student. And I, re- I still remember, you know, the, the day that I called him and, um, you know, I, I was, of course, I was a single mom at the time. And when I met my husband and um, I remember when um, applying for subsidies so that I could get daycare paid for, um, they actually declined my application because they said, oh, you're not working enough hours and school doesn't count. And I was so frustrated because I was like, well, I'm going to school so that I could be better and, you know, um, make more money and contribute to society. But um, anyways, I still remember having that conversation about, hey, you know, um, I, I can't do this alone. We, you know, can you, um, can we work together? And that really changed the dynamics of our relationship and really built that trust right away when we pulled our resources together. Because as we kind of went through, of course, the different seasons of, um, you know, our financial journey together, um, we already had that good foundation of trust. Yeah. And a lot of times too, money is, well, of course we deal with money every single day. So I feel that at least you get to hold your spouse accountable and we know where our finances is going, right? Rather than having to ask or be curious and then you know, whatever situation that may come up. But could you, um, you know, talk a little bit more about the other um, six reasons that lead to, or going back to the article? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm looking at the article here. It says the second thing was carrying old debts. I mean, we kind of talked about that. I think sometimes too, it's just, you know, um, putting that, being honest and putting that out on the table, um, I think is a, a big thing, you know, because, um, when we're upfront about our debt, then at least we can communicate about it and and have, create a plan, right? To um, and how we can get out of that debt together. Um, the third thing on the article was um, ignoring personality differences. So this is a, um, I think this is also a big one. Um, one of the things that I recommend people doing is really 
first of all, understanding like what is your money script, right? Um, and, like how what is your relationship with money? What is your um? Do you um understand like you know if you understand your relationship with your money, then you get a better understanding of your behavior with money. So you know they say some people are spenders, some people are savers, right? So um understanding your money personality or they call it money script there's actually a test that you could take online which i recommend everybody the way you just you know look it up um take your take my money or um take money script test right it should pull up online and um it talks about just really understanding your own personal psychology of your relationship with money right and then when you understand when you know your relationship with money then it's a lot easier to then now communicate with each other right you and your spouse because i think it's hard enough already like money is such a difficult topic and for uh, most people they don't ever talk about it mm -hmm. um first and foremost and then now you're dealing with two people talking about money right so now you have those the extra challenge of now there's two of you um so um personal personality differences is a big one um because you just have to understand again um, so that you can come from a better place of understanding each other. Yes, definitely. Um, the next one, it says staging power plays. So this is a big one too. And um, I know there were different times in my husband and I's career where um, this was not, this is probably, we didn't, we did this really unknowingly and unintentionally, um, but it did hurt. Like, you know, there were times that we, um, there was, it caused pain when you're, you know, when you're staging a power play basically because you know in a relationship one person could be making significantly more than the other person and so when you leverage that over your partner then of course that doesn't make for a, a good relationship period right and then you add money to the mix and so you can see now where that can create an issue um the next one here is um supporting a growing family so i think um Sometimes there's a lot of conflict with how um, couples decide on, you know, how they're going to allocate their resources when it comes to um, their children. So that's, in the, you know, because the average cost to raise a child from zero eight to 18, um, do you remember how much that is, Shana? Um, was it a million? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe your child. <laughs> your child's a million. Um, but about quarter of a million dollars, right? To raise a child from zero to eighteen years old. And <laughs> yeah, I, well, yeah, true, right? It's it's probably gonna be about that much very soon. Um, everything's so expensive now. Um another thing too is like uh on this article is extended family. So there's a lot of money issues around that because sometimes, you know, um, so you're now and you have your resources within your own family, right? Your financial resources. But then you now sometimes um, extended family, like your parents, your siblings, um, that could also come into play where, you know, family, like either you have to support them financially or they're asking for financial support. So that can really be issues within the marriage that um, sometimes is not always talked about up front, you know, how does deal with that but I think it's a good conversation to have you know um with okay if there was family that you needed to support outside within your own family how you would handle that yeah I'm glad we're having this conversation because all of the um tip or all the points that you're making right now from this article is at least something that I have dealt with in my marriage um and relationship so I've been you know with my other half for seven years and I remember going back, you know, carrying debt from before, you know, being in a relationship. I know when I, was, I had my student debt, it was a lot. And I remember not even sharing it with uh, my spouse because I just felt what was a need. It's on the one. But also, yeah. there was a huge need because it weighed so heavy on my shoulder. I right. didn't didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to start. I felt lost and it caused me to be very emotional and, you know, lash out in other areas. And when you talk about, um, uh, what was that? 
you know, power moves or making more money, I can, I can understand how that could, you know, cause a significant rift in your relationship. So I'm glad we're having this conversation because I feel like when you say it, it's like, that. it kind of makes sense. But when you talk about it, it just, it's bringing that awareness, right? So, you know, what, what are some tips on how to keep money for, um, from destroying your marriage? What are some, let's end this on a positive note. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, again, first and foremost, you know, really understand yourself, right? And how, and your own relationship with money. Like, and this is an exercise I would recommend um, couples do on their own and then come to get together to discuss it. So, you know, my husband and I did this. We both did our money scripts test and some of the things we actually had a lot of common, we scored, um, we, in certain scores, we had a lot of common, um, uh, like money beliefs then, and then the others were completely opposite, right? And so um, start there. So at least um, that's a good place to start. So again, that you can better understand each other. Um, the second thing I would do is, um, you know, communicate, right? Um, be, um, set regular times to meet about, um, money communication about you know whether it's and you know again everybody's going to be different whether you need to, you may have to start meeting um daily when you first start or once a week or you know have these um uh, schedule the planning meeting so that you can openly talk and communicate about you know what's going on with your finances um i would say also set a spending plan Right. So um, it's really important to be aligned with how you're going to allocate your resources. I think you um, it's good, a good idea to decide, OK, this percent we're going to agree on for um, to spend on our home and food and, you know, fix expenses. And then you can and, and also how much will be will we save and save and invest. And then lastly, the, the spending plan for each other. Right. So um, I, I shared this with you before, right, Sheena, that, um, you know, my husband and I, we set a certain amount of money um, every month so that we he can that amount of money he spends on whatever he chooses. Right. I do not question what he buys with that money. And I think it's helped with, you know, really just having that respect um, for each other. And also it's fair because, you know, we've already um taking care of all of our household um, and all of our saving and investing. And then, the, and then we decide, okay, this is the amount of money that we're going to, um, you know, spend for ourselves. And um, so that's really key, uh, really getting in alignment with um, how to allocate your resources and creating your own personal um, spending plan. I think that's important to, so that you can feel like you still have some independence, right, with, and control over your money and, um, not always being told how to to spend it um and and i like the spending plan better than a budget because the budget is so restrictive right or at least it's just the play on words i mean it's the same thing right you're um but i feel that when most people are feel restricted it's kind of like a diet you know when you, you're good maybe the first few days and afterwards you just you feel so restricted um so it's the same thing with finance is really just um create that spending plan because most people, they want to spend money, right? So um, how can you spend it wisely? How can you allocate it wisely? Um, and then also setting financial goals together. I think that's really important. Um, you know, setting financial goals so that you can stay in alignment and have that vision for, you know, exactly where you want to go as a couple. Because I think that's, that is really, really important because then um, there are going to be times where you may get off track. Right. And you need to come back together and say, hey, you know, when you have these planning meetings, um, if, you know, uh, and this happened to me and my husband, too. There were times where it's like, hey, we're spending too much. This is we're not um, this is getting away from what we actually really want to do, what we talked about, the goals that we set. So then um, it's important to have that as a good foundation so that you can um, make sure that you're both working towards that goal and helps to, to um, you know, it helps you with your day to day money decisions as well. Um, and the last thing I would say is get, um, educated and continue to get educated. You know, there's always, um, in the household, a lot more, for the most part, there's usually one person that's handling most of the finances, right? The day-to-day -day things. But I think it's so important that you 
you know, both couples learn together, right? Um, continue to stay, to continue to get educated, find resources like World System Builders that offers, you know, free financial workshops um, twice a week. Uh, it's so important to continue to get educated because, you know, there's um, with your finances and as you go through your marriage, you know, that you're going to have different seasons and different needs and different goals. And so I think it's important to continue to um, educate yourself so that um, you can stay on track with, you know, your financial goals and set new goals as you go along. Wow. I love all of that. And you're absolutely right about all the tips that you've provided. I know we've had many conversations uh, throughout our time of knowing each other. And I know it has helped me a lot, but the main takeaways that I have is that communication is important, education, and planning, right? And I like the the psychology of the words that you're using of not being restricted and having a budget, but having a spending plan, right? And whenever you plan for something, then you have something to look forward to. And I know when you shared with me having a spending plan on a month to month base, that significantly helped my relationship with my husband. Because you're right, we, human nature, we, of course, we want to spend our money, right? And I know you mentioned the energy of money, right? It's not supposed to be kept. Um, we are supposed to spend. So we don't want to feel restricted all the times. But with money comes great responsibility. And I feel our conversation that we're having today is that in order to have a great marriage and money plays a big role, it's a huge responsibility. So what are we going to do about it? That was some great tips that you shared. I feel I feel like I'll call him and talk to my husband right now about our finances. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? We, and my husband and I constantly have these conversations still you know again because things change all the time so um oh a big another big thing is we there's certain amounts that if if we're spending at a certain amount that we have to both agree on it right so that's another big thing i think when you're um when it's a larger amount than usual then i think it's always good to be in consensus so then there's all resentment too yes yes wow Thank you so much for being on the show and having this conversation. I know money sometimes not sometimes isn't the easiest topic to talk about, but I feel that with the tips that you shared and with all the statistics, it's something that is very doable and it can be a very comfortable conversation. So Ryan, you know, thank you so much for being on the show. I feel like I always learn so much from you and I'm sure everyone else um, has learned a lot from you as well. And I hope to see you all at the next episode of Money Talks. I'm Shayna Park, the Gen Z Inspiring Lives of Liberties. Thank you.